Hello and welcome back to um, the Marches Centre of Manufacturing and Technology YouTube channel. We're going to explore a little bit further one of our STEM challenges that we've set you. So what we're going to explore is the classic motor car challenge and what we're going to be looking at is the different types of electronic components that you could integrate into your modern system. So we're going to look at electronic components. Now remember, your challenge is to develop an idea to integrate modern technology into a classic motor car while still retaining its original features. Now, before you start designing your modern system, you really need to think about what an electronic system is. And when you start designing a system, whether it's electronic, which it will be in your case, or whether it be pneumatic or mechanical, it's important to know what the product is capable of doing. So this is the output. So you need to think about what do you want to happen at the end of your electronic system. So the output is what you want the system to do. So for instance, if it becomes dark, do I want my headlights to automatically turn on? So that would be the output, the lights, the lamps. Systems are often designed using a system diagram known as a circuit diagram in the, in the case of electronics and that considers the input, process and output of a system. How the system actually works, that is known as the process and the input is the part of the system that enables the process to start happening. So to find out more about electronic systems please visit the BBC Bite Size page where there's lots of information for you to demonstrate your knowledge and understanding of electronic systems. So just to keep it brief, input, process and output. Now, when you start selecting your components, you need to think about what you want the product, how you want the product to function. So there are a range of input devices, control devices and output devices, which we're going to explore with you. And again, if you want to explore in more detail the uh, knowledge and understanding of electronics, please visit the BBC Bite Size um, page. Inputs. So let's explore some of the inputs. So this is what we do to a, an electronic system to make the electric circuit work. So some really obvious inputs are switches. Now, do we think a switch is an appropriate input for this modern system? Well, yes, it could be. It depends on what the system is. But there are hundreds of different switches and they range in design, style and, and how they function. So just looking at some of these switches here, we've got a push to brake switch, which activates the circuit um, only when it's left off. So when you push the switch down, the circuit is broken. So you push the switch to deactivate the circuit. On the opposite of that, you've got the push to make switch, which works by pushing the button. So once you push the button down and hold it down, that makes the circuit work. So obviously with these switches, they only function when you leave pressure on the actual button. The other switch type, which can be permanently switched over, is a rocker switch. So again, these switches that we go through now all have a similar function, but are very different in design. The other switch uh, is a micro switch, which you have to press the small metal lever for it to work. And then you've got the slide switch, which you need to slide across and remains there. And then the toggle switch. So these are different examples of input puts. Lots of examples of inputs can be found on the rapid online um, site and this is a great site to look for different component designs once you've understood the name of the component. So what we're going to look at next is another range of inputs. Now these are known as sensors so the way in which these help the circuit work they will the circuit will only work once it's sensed what it's been designed to sense. So the first sensor is known as a light dependent resistor and that senses light. So for instance, street lights come on when it's dark and they do that automatically. So they have got light sensors embedded 
into their electronic system. So when it's dark at night, the, the light street lights turn on. So you might want to use a light sensor. Okay. The other type of sensor you might want to use is known as a reed switch. And this reads magnetic field. And it's only activated when it comes into contact with a magnet. So a reed switch. The other type of input that you might want to use is known as a thermistor. And a thermistor measures and reads temperature. Now you can use process system to help uh, your electronic system read the amount of light or read the, 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 the reach of magnetic field or read the level of temperature. So we can improve the complexity of our system. The other type of sensor you could use is a tilt switch which detects movements. And then we've got another sensor called a distance sensor which detects the distance between the sensor and a physical object. Now they've all of these sensors vary in type and vary in complexity. And again, you can explore different sensors using the Rapid Online site. Now, as we've explained earlier, the process is the, the action in between the input and the output, which will help to improve your system to work better. We'll explore some examples of processes in a bit more detail on the next tutorial when we start exploring um, how you build an electronic circuit and the different types, because the process will depend on the inputs and outputs that you use and the complexity of your system. But process um, devices can support in helping with the current flow. You can build in uh, components into a circuit so everything is integrated, or you can make use of um, components known as microcontrollers, which help to control that current currency flow throughout your circuit. So we'll talk about those in a bit more detail at a later stage. We really want to, fo want to focus on different inputs and outputs to help you decide on the main components that you need in your electronic system. So moving on to outputs then. So an output is a component or action that will be activated after the process. So you've thought about inputs. Now you need to think about if my modern system was to detect light, what do I want the output to be? So in this case, if it was a headlamp, I would want to choose a light, a lamp. So think about what you want the output to be. There are different outputs. And as you can see here, we've got a buzzer, which would give you a small, you know, buzzing noise. We've got a speaker, which would be a bit more complex because it would allow you to project sound and music through there and allow you to design, you know, the particular sound that you wanted. Uh, we've got lamps, which again, you can get varying size of lamps and lights that you could use in your circuit. We've got motors, so maybe you want something to move. And then we've got LEDs. Now, all of these components, you can purchase and design an electronic circuit to suit the function and what you want it to do. So ex to explore components in a bit more detail, have a look at Rapid Online. Once you've got an idea of the type of component you want, it's a bit easier to search for the different sizes and voltages. So we've explored different resources already. So electronic components, if you want to find out and get some examples of different types of components in a bit more detail, have a look at Rapid Online and you can get the specification for each component. The other site we'd like to draw your attention to is the Institute of Engineering and Technology that has some excellent teaching resources. Um, in the secondary section and they have some examples of posters which talks through the basics of electronic components and electronic sim symbols. Some excellent resources there to support your knowledge of electronics and much more. And then they also have a great range of resources for careers advice. So thanks for listening to the short introduction into electronic components. We hope you enjoy this challenge and we hope you learn a lot and it helps you develop your skill set in making you more employable for one of our apprenticeship training routes. Now remember, the objective is to design a modern system to be integrated into a classic car. So hopefully you've chosen your model already. 
Thank you for listening. Goodbye.